Welcome to Britain's Rare Guitars, and on this week's show we have the guitar collector extraordinaire Barry Gaskell with his amazing Beatles themed guitar. I go and visit some guitar auctions and find out about this George Harrison guitar that recently sold for £350,000. And we also have the legend that is Lars Mullen in on the show with us. But first we have some music from the fabulous Charlotte Mary, accompanied by our own James Franklin. Right, well thanks for coming in today Charlotte, loved the first track, what was it called? Distance. Brilliant, well could you tell me and the viewers at home a little bit about Charlotte Mary? Yep, so I'm a um, songwriter from Manchester and I write sort of Americana uh, music and that's me. So I noticed that you're from Manchester but yep. you sing in a normal accent. Yeah. Do you find that, um, <laughs> do you find that? <laughs> normal accent, I love it. Yeah, so um, it's one of those things really, even though I am Northern, I, um, I don't have that twang in my music, so I'm not Oasis yet, but when my passion comes out, I'll probably end up there. Have you ever messed up, though, when you've been recording? Have you ever come out? Yeah, there's the occasional sort of uh, e bag gums coming out every now and again, <laughs> but yeah, it's been good. <laughs> Can you tell us about uh, what other music influences your music? Yeah, so uh, Springsteen, Fleetwood Mac, uh, sort of Americana, sort of 70s vibe, uh, which I absolutely love, which came from my dad's side of uh, playing music. But yeah, that's my influences. Cool. Um, and how can we find your music online? Um, so if you head to, um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook and uh, Soundcloud, so you can find me on Facebook at Charlotte Mary Music, you can find me on Instagram at Charlotte Mary UK and Soundcloud on C Mary Music. And well, what about gigs? You got many lined up for this year? Uh, yeah, I've got quite a few lined up for this year, but if you head over to my website, which is charlottemary.co.uk, you can find all the listings on there. Cool. And obviously we know James is your uh, guitarist. Indeed. I mean, what's that like? He doesn't even drive, right? I so. know. I'm, I'm his chauffeur. He turns up, plays incredible guitar, and then we drive home together. And, that's and you drop him off first, taxiing it. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> I'm his chauffeur, but trust me, when it's the other way around and I'm up there with the stars, he'll be driving me, so it's all good. I'm here with Barry, and Barry has been a collector of rare guitars for, what, 30 years? And the rest. And the rest, <laughs> yeah, more. Yeah. I said 30 years. Yeah, so yeah. what was it that got you so into collecting guitars then? Well, when I was a young lad, my elder brother played in the 60s Liverpool boom, you know, and um, I used to go along with him for the ride and see all this, the glamour of the bands and the clubs and the, the whole scene, just magic. And now as I grew a bit older, I, you know, got the bug myself, played in bands, got guitars, wanted the best guitar I could get and couldn't afford. And then yeah. you see the shadows with the fenders and you, you're lusting after those, you know, the fire was lit and that was it. it that was, was it. Excellent. Got to have them, got to have them. <laughs> yeah, a passion, on, an obsession. An obsession is yes. the word, that's a good word. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah, yeah. So he's actually brought something really, Really cool today. Something so old, it doesn't have a name. <laughs> uh, oh, I think it doesn't. Yeah, uh, tell well, us about it. What is it? It's got a designation number. Because it's an endorsed guitar, Roy Smeck, it's got an endorsed 104 number. All his guitars have that number on it. It's a 1938 Recording King Gibson made uh, Roy Smeck model archtop guitar. So it's a, it's a nice beast. Yes, definitely. Something I noticed immediately when I picked this thing up is the giant... <laughs> It's huge. It's the biggest one I've the, the, touched. The V-profile yeah, neck. Yeah, yeah the yeah, big V-profile yeah, yeah. neck. Now, why would it have a V-profile neck? Because it wasn't Gibson's premier model. It was a slightly lesser model, and e economics being what it was, it's cheaper to build a substantial neck guitar with a good, strong profile than 
put a truss rod in. Okay. And they didn't want to just cutting cost little corners here. Yeah, and there. they didn't want to yeah. compete with the Premier guitar, so that was the reason really. Okay, and something else that's really special is the pickup, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's the Charlie yeah. Charlie Christie pickup. Uh, type pickup, because uh, they didn't want to compete again with their Premier model, which was the ES150, which was called a Charlie Christian mm. guitar. Even though it's a Charlie Christian pickup. In, in essence, it doesn't look like one. They didn't want that competition again with the Premier. Oh, Rangers. so they made it a bit of a poor man's... Poor man's just to, Charlie Christian pickup. You know, help with yeah, the yeah. money, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. OK, and being such an old guitar, I'm curious, what kind of wood would they have used back then in the 30s? The body uh, is made of, uh, back and size, made of um, maple laminate. The top is a carved spruce top, um, which is really nice to make. It's an arch mm. top. Gorgeous colour. Yeah, Tobacco yeah. Sunburst, it's yeah. Two tones. Yeah, like a two yeah. tone sunburst. Um, the neck is mahogany. The board is uh, uh, rosewood, probably Brazilian. That was the premier wood mm. at the time, and bound with I think they called it an ivorine. Wow. So it's still really exotic, even though uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Even though it's poor man's guitar. Even though it was yeah. below the premier model, it was still a very yeah. well made guitar, and it's nice. Now it's got its original tuning pegs on it. The well. original. Yeah, yeah. How many years? Yeah. Eighty years old. 80 plus, yeah, 80, 80 years yeah. old, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and they still function, they're still. Yeah. I don't think it's been played very much. I think it's been someone's had it lovingly in a case and it's not seen out of day for a lot, many years. Well, what kind yeah. of musician would play this instrument? Uh, jazz guitarists, um, big band. Just comping. It was very much a yeah. comping, rhythmic thing. I love the Gretsch Country Gentleman bass he brought in for me. It was a monster. Sounded great, Becky, as did the Charlie Christian guitar. Later in the series, we're going to be showing you how you can get started as a guitar collector. And one of those things you might do is go to a guitar auction. Let's see what happened when I went to Gardner and Holgate guitar auction in Bath. As you can all see at home, there is a sea of guitars behind me. But Luke, is there anything in particular we should be looking out for today? Um, yeah, so I mean, in in this room, you know, that we're we're in at the moment, we've got around 400 guitars that are within the price range of, you know, your £50 Squire, right up to your one to £2,000 mm. Fenders, yeah. Gibsons, you know, you name it, the big brand names, the things that people are after. You know, we've got a lot of quirky stuff that can fall under the radar a little bit and can be seen as bargains. And then next door, we have another room with all guitars, £2,000 and above, and we've got guitars that could make twenty thousand pounds plus well I'll stop um, you there because last time you guys sold a 350 thousand pound george harrison guitar could you tell us a little bit about that and what made it so special it was a circa 1960 mate on master sound ms 500 model um, an australian made instrument this guitar in particular was loaned to George Harrison to use when his country gent was being repaired. He used it on, it was approximately nine shows, but the significant part of the provenance is it was used on the last ever Cavern performance in the summer of 1963, which was the rise of Beatlemania as well. So, so that, that just went... So that just, yeah. you know, created the interest. We had a pre-sale estimate of, you know, 300 to 400,000. Like so you're you said, actually right yeah, on the money we were, there. We were right on the money with, yeah. you know, the final, final cost, yeah. Wow, okay, cool. So what if I wanted to I don't, but what if I wanted to sell one of my guitars here? What would be the process? How would I get involved? Is it is it really difficult or is it really easy? It's a very simple process and then, you know, the process is seen right through from cataloguing the guitar properly, professional photography for all lots featured up on the website and in the catalogue. The physical catalogues are sent out to a dedicated focused mailing list, email mailing list wow. alerts are sent out and then we get up on the rostrum, sell, you sell do the guitars, I do it myself. So I'm a, exactly, yeah, yeah so uh, <laughs> not quite as frantic as a cattle auction, but you know. 288, uh, we have the 1946 Selma Petit Bouche acoustic jazz guitar. There we are, the last of the Selmas there. I can start with bids away at £8,500. Do I see £8,800 now? We do get through at a rate of around 80 lots an hour, so it is still pretty fast, you know, it's, there's more than one a minute. So yeah, we get through at a fast pace and yeah, and then after, after the sale and everything's done, um, we make uh, quick payment shortly after the auction itself. Selling then at £14,500 is a room bidder, all done at £14,500 and finished, are we? Yours for £14,500, sir. And I've just been handed this amazing resonator guitar, piece of blues history right here in my hands. This is Bucker White's original guitar from 1933. It's even got his set list on it. Now, I'd love to show you this, but I can't play slide guitar at 
at all, but I've seen someone around who does, and I'm going to see if he'll give us a little play now, all right? Andrew, thanks for playing that guitar, because I can't play anything like that. It was a pleasure, believe me. <laughs> well, could you tell us well, what you've got in your hands? The reason it's a pleasure is because I love playing these sort of guitars anyway. These are national resonating guitars. But this one, uh, for a blues player like me, is, is like the holy grail, because it was owned by Bucker White. Buck, Bucker White was um, originally played in Mississippi, on the farms in Mississippi back in the 1930s, and he played this guitar. And... Uh, but he kind of disappeared a bit, and uh, like so many of the old blues players, he was rediscovered in the 1960s, uh, mostly through the, the Newport Festival in America. And these young white audiences suddenly discovered these old blues players, and it was just astonishing. And Bucker White was, was the hero, still is for people like me. It, his style of playing was very much like I was just, just playing, but a lot better than me. But this was his guitar. And the, the really lovely bit is, uh, apart from the fact it's a gorgeous guitar, it's got his set list on the side. That's awesome. <laughs> I can't, can't prove it, but uh, I have seen pictures of him playing with a set list on the side of his guitar. Well, it must be wonderful, even if you don't buy it, to come here and Incredible. try something like that. There's, there's no way I can buy this, believe me. But historically, it's just, as I say, it's like, it's like me discovering, the, a Christian discovering the Holy yeah. Grail. It is just the guitar to, to play and to hold. Yeah.